Yes, folks, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Mod Extra Games and Collectibles. It's time for another action figure review here on the channel. And as you can see on the screen right now, today's instalment is going to be all about taking a closer look at the McFarlane Toys Digital DC Direct Classic Green Lantern figure. So stick around, folks. I'm going to give you all the ins and outs, ups and downs that you need to know about the Green Lantern. So if you've been thinking about picking one up for yourself, you'll have lots of thorough, well thought out information to make a decision as to whether this is the right figure for you and whether it's worth splashing your cash on. So I'm going to talk you through the packaging experience and the unboxing experience. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the aesthetic and the visual experience of the character, walk through the articulation, walk through all the accessories and added value, and have a little bit of a conversation around the McFarlane and digital piece the whole nft action figure malarkey so yeah that's it i'm gonna just nice thorough review to let you know all about the green lantern so stick around uh, we'll get into it all right then folks well here is the mcfarlane toys digital dc direct green lantern figure uh because it's a dc direct McFarlane figure, it's got a slightly different packaging motif than the DC Multiverse stuff, even though it is clearly a 7-inch Todd McFarlane <laughs> DC Multiverse figure, but whatever, <laughs> I don't really understand. I thought this DC Direct was the brand for the 6-inch line, like the animated series re-releases, but apparently not. Um, but yeah, slightly different motif, but mostly in the colour scheme. You can see like this little teal pattern here, uh, and it's got like a, a Todd McFarlane logo sort of uh, watermarked into it and stuff so that's fine but it's the standard day in the life boring fare of McFarlane toys packaging big window on the front showing off the figure and all the goodies a little bit of stuff like the name of the character the name of the brand and the logos and all that kind of stuff then on the back lovely big bit of artwork there I don't know what that's from but it's got a variant cover feel about it and it's been a while since I've read a, a, a Green Lantern uh, comic book but that feels like maybe a, a contemporary variant cover of some description or another legal bollocks and malarkey all over the place age ratings blah 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 the side here's got the name it's green lantern silver age which makes the uh, uh, artwork choice on the back even more puzzling and then just some more window on the side there uh, with a uh, qr code to scan for more information step into the world of mcfarlane toys digital collect your favorite figures that include this logo and use the enclosed code to redeem, redeem your exclusive digital collectible. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, so I've got the uh, digital action figure with this one. All right, well, well, we'll check that out, shall we, and see what's the script. But for now, let's get this bad boy open. So I've popped the uh, tape at the bottom there. Uh, open the flaps, slide it out. Standard McFarlane fare, got the blister pack there with the uh, cardboard frame. The cardboard frame has the trading card, the foot stand, and oh, this is the McFarlane Toys digital stuff. Why is that strapped in? They've even tie wrapped down the trading card and the McFarlane Toys digital. This must be because there's a, oh yeah, look, there's a code there. All right, I'll have a look at that later, but freaking hell, tie wrapping down that. But I'll crack these open off screen anyway in a minute. And while I'm on the subject of tie wraps, this figure and accessories are tie wrapped in within an inch of their life. Uh, which is, again, typical Todd McFarlane fare. So let me uh, get the scissors. Right, not to sound like a broken record, folks, but tie wraps and uh, blister packs really affects my enjoyment of the action figure opening experience. It really ruins the unboxing experience for me. And Todd's so retro that he tie wraps them in like it's still the fucking 1980s. Anyway, uh, what do we got here? We've got a couple of energy effects uh, in the top right corner there. Looks like they fit around his hands. Yeah, got like little some uh, little hand potholes there. Uh, then we've got the uh, uh, the charging lantern. Well, it's just one big piece of rubbery plastic, that. Uh, then the hands, taped in, of course. There we go. Pop those off. Couple of hand swaps. And then the figure itself. Oh, that came out quite nice. Quite nice and easy, actually. Uh, I'm just sorting these cards out here. This tie wrap. So I've just popped it from the side. And slid that out like that. The tie, <laughs> this tie wrap is not achieving anything. It, this additional piece of security is not even keeping it more secure, Todd. All right, then, folks. Well, there we go. There is the DC Direct McFarlane Toys Digital Green Lantern released from its plastic prison, uh, ready for some man child playtime. So, as usual, I'm going to go away, get some hands on experience with the figure uh, i've actually got my fallen toys display going right now on the interchangeable display so I'll, I'll get him up in there as well see how he fits in with the other figures and such like that looks like a bit of a dodgy leg there um 
In fact, that looks a bit dodgy as well. Uh, <laughs> stop playing with the figure. Just finish your intro, Chris. Uh, so, yeah, uh, go away. Have a bit of my child play time, and I'll be back in a couple of days' time to share my review for it. So stick around. Future Chris is going to be with you in three, two, one. Okay, then, folks, let's talk a little bit about the aesthetic qualities of the figure, then. Let's talk about the visual experience uh, and i'm going to start with a kind of full body view of the figure it's the classic mcfarlane book i've got a number of figures in my dc multiverse collection that uses this book um it, it, it is his standard sort of superhero lycra character um, but overall, the visual experience is good. It looks like a good, solid, classic Hal Jordan, which um, you know is what I wanted, the reason that I was drawn to the figure. He's got the right colour scheme in there, the greens are good, the black pieces of his uniform. It looks like the classic 80s, 90s uniform you picture in your mind's eye. Got the white gloves in there as well. Uh, the book is solid. It's a solid book. I mean, it's the McFarlane book, so we'll talk about the articulation in a minute. Uh, but aesthetically, it looks good. Uh, there is a bit of colour difference between the boots, the nappy and the, the main body of the green, which is a bit of a shame, but th that is what it is. But your overall shelf presence and, uh, you know, your, your, your eyeballing of the character, it looks like a good, solid, classic Green Lantern. Getting in a bit closer then, so we can you know inspect some of the finer details. The head sculpt's solid. It's a good head sculpt. I've been a little bit down on McFarlane with regards to head sculpts of late, but I quite like this one. It's it's definitely Hal Jordan. You know, you've got the the, the kind of quiff of brown hair there, um, although he's not got the graying sides, uh, which is what my Hal Jordan looked like he had the, the graying sides there he's not got the graying sides but other than that yeah the hairstyle the good uh, flick of hair there the mask paint application is well applied and is well sculpted around the facial features there got the white eyes in between the mask he's got a little bit of a cheeky facial expression going on you know Hal Jordan cocky pilot guy that's that's part of his character and comes through in the visual identity uh, of this character through that little smirky face thing that's going on uh, he's got the good all American Justice League square jaw in there. I think, if anything, the only criticism I would have of the head sculpt is that Todd's done that thing with the lips where it's a bit dark and looks like he's he's wearing some lipstick. But outside of that, um, yeah, I actually uh, I'm into the head sculpt, and I think it's one of the better ones I've seen of late, and certainly less goofy than than some of the stuff that Todd's produced. The Green Lantern symbol on the front here as well is a paint application. It's not a decal or anything. Um, so that, that's nice. And again, well applied, no spillage, but good, solid. You know, there he is. There's his Green Lantern symbol. And then the uh, paint application down the sides here where the black and green meet is, is nice. It's the first time in a while I've talked about a McFarlane figure and not gone, look at all this paint spillage. Look at how badly the paint's been applied. Look at how goofy the face sculpt looks. I'm, I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised. <laughs> also, as we've seen with this book before, you've got some well-sculpted kind of superhero hero style musculature in there um, although what it is missing and i've mentioned this before is a bit of texture detail you know sometimes todd does some really nice stuff with texture detail some fabric uh, finer details in there to give it some depth uh, and that's lacking this is a little bit sheer and shiny on some of the uh, certainly on the black areas you can see there like on the flat thighs there's a bit of shine to it um so it's, yeah he's lacking a little bit of texture detail but mm, that is what it is Speaking of finer details, um, we've got the ring here on his right hand. There's a little bit of sculpted detail in there. Uh, the paint application is actually a bit loosey-goosey around the edges on that one, but it is quite a small part of the figure. Uh, and you, you only really notice it if you're a, you know, a YouTube reviewer who's really <laughs> fine detail inspecting the figure. Uh, but you can see that it's not fully painted. But yeah, there's a tiny bit of sculpting detail in there. And certainly enough to surround the, you know, the the lantern ring uh, from Oa mm, that you associate the character with. No problems at all. And then sculpted boots. I love sculpted boots. You're looking Hasbro. Um, your superhero lines could do with a few more sculpted boots rather than painted on boots. They're pretty simple, pretty straightforward, functional boots, just like the ones that Hal Jordan wears. But you can see he's got this kind of sculpted rim around the top there. Um, just again, giving it a bit of depth, a bit of personality. Because this is this uh, same old book that's been knocking around with McFarlane toys for a while now, we've still got pins, pins in the elbows, pins in the knee. I've said before, they don't bother me all that much, but as the price increases, it, it, it gives you a moment's pause. You know, it gives you a moment's pause to wonder, like, where's, where's, the, where's the quality of engineering improvement and momentum forward? 
in the line. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of, of a meaningful transformation or evolution uh, over the years. So, uh, And that's because it's the same book, the same Lycra superhero book over and over again, you know. I like here that the uh, the gloves, you know, the, the uh, wrist joint is somewhat partially integrated into uh, the pattern there. So that sort of ball joint thing there doesn't stand out too much. Although the white of the joints are slightly different to the white of the gloves, so it stands out. Uh, in fact, the other arm, I think, is a bit more egregious. Yeah, you can sort of see it uh, oh, under the lights. It's quite bright, but trust me, the, the white doesn't uh, doesn't blend well between the two. And it's those nice uh, ankle boots, those uh, better aesthetic ankle boot situation as well down here. So, yeah, I think it's a thumbs up on the aesthetic. There's no random crap in here, you know, no random shit. Like, I've, like the Superman with the reused belt from a more modern version of Superman, which then makes it not a classic Superman. None of that going on here. Just good, solid, superhero, shape, size, book. The colour combinations are right. The uniform looks right. It's a decent head sculpt for a change. Doesn't look too goofy. Yeah, it's it's all round rock solid. Um, aside from the fact it's an old book and therefore you've got some out-of-date kind of stuff like the pins, it's a solid foot forward, yeah. So, uh, sure, thumbs up on aesthetic. All right, let's have a rundown of the articulation then, shall we? All right, folks, I'm going to go top to bottom on the figure and just work my way through the articulation. But uh, because it's a reused book, um, and because even though it's DC Direct, it's basically DC Multiverse, if you've had one of these uh, figures in hand before, you'll know the routine. So I'll put timestamps in. You can jump ahead to take a look at the accessories. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy to take the hit on the average view duration, but if you're interested or you want to see if there's any quirks or this is the first DC figure from Mavalon Toys that you've ever looked at, I'll give you a quick rundown. Starting at the top of the neck here, it's a ball uh, in the base of the head, which gives you full 360 all the way around, pretty decent down, fairly decent up, and then a little bit of tilty movement and stuff up there, which is pretty good. Then it's the pegged in rotating shoulders with a little plastic piece to cover up the joint, which gives you full 360 all the way around, a hinge out to give you the T shape, and a little bit of shuffle forward and back there. There's a swivel there at the top of the bicep and tricep. Mine are both a little bit stiff unless I hold the uh, shoulder joint in, but you get the idea. The aforementioned pinned elbows, which will get you up to there. And then the hand is pegged onto that uh, weird McFarlane hinge bully wrist thing there, uh, which gives you a full 360 all the way around. And then you've got your forward and back and you can move that joint in there if you want to do some other stuff as well. Then in the torso, you've got the cut here just uh, at the top of the abs. And then there's a waist swivel in there, which gives you pretty good range of motion at the top. And then a bit of swivel in the middle here. It's that weird McFarlane hingey thing under the nappy there, which gives you... Uh, Russian ballet splits up to there, forward up to about there, and back to about there. This figure's got some pretty good swivel at the top there as well. Uh, not too bad as a uh, kind of a partial replacement for the thigh cut, uh, which helps a little bit for sure. Uh, yeah, that one's got some pretty good movement in that space. Pin double knee, that'll get you up to there. You've got the McFarlane uh, hinge and rocker, as per usual, on the feet there, giving you some forward and back. That one's a bit crunchy. And some rocking motion on the front there. And of course, as with all McFarlane figures, you can bend the toes. So the articulation is fine. For fear of repeating myself when I've reviewed other McFarlane figures in the past, it's very much a uh, statuesque action figure with some you know, action figure elements to it. Uh, and it's, it's very much been sculpted with the articulation as a kind of secondary thought. Is it as poseable and interesting as other lines that I collect? Absolutely not. When compared to G.I. Joe Classified, when compared to Jada Toy Street Fighter, when compared to Marvel Legends, uh, I find a wider range of posability. But I know that going in. You know, I'm aware of that going in. That's uh, I bought this figure because I want it as a display piece in a little kind of Justice League, classic look Justice League setup that I'm going for. So if you go in knowing that your articulation's not going to be the equivalent of what you get with some other lines, it's fine. And therefore, uh, by its own standard, I've got to give it a thumbs up. Uh, I think where it becomes a problem is that when you've got the limited articulation, then the sculpts are coming out weird and wrong you know um or the scale is odd um which is not the case with this one so you've got a, a decent balance so a tentative thumbs up judging it by its own standard but if you're used to kind of hasbro style articulation or you know uh, mafex or jada toys or whatever you, you might find this a little bit limited all right well there's the articulation let's now take a look at the accessory selection all right first out of the gate we've got hal jordan's lantern battery here uh, in this kind of green translucent 
plastic, uh, accurately shaped, at least to my um, recollection uh, of versions of it. We've, you know, we've had different interpretations, but versions of it from the comic book, it's immediately recognisable as a, a, a Green Lantern a lantern battery. Um, the handle here, as you can see, is a little bit skiwiffy. Um, I've tried heating it to get it sort of bend back a little bit. I did have it fully straight um, for a brief period in time, but it sort of edged its way back over. I don't know what that's all about, uh, but it's fine and yeah, does the purpose. It's just a bit kind of soft and, and gummy there uh, and a bit tricky to get into his hands. But overall, you know, in terms of some poses and displays you want to put him in, using his lantern batteries, you know, on point, part of the character, part of his identity, uh, a, a, an accessory item for some storytelling, which is all great. Then while we're on the translucent green stuff, we've got these two kind of uh, uh, fist energy effects here. Uh, these are decent. These look nice, but swooshy, swirly, sculpted kind of energy effect type thing. One for each hand. Got this little kind of spiky tail coming out the end. I believe it's reused from another figure. Um, I, don't, I don't believe this has been uniquely sculpted for Hal Jordan. They've just produced a, a green edition of this energy effect. Um, and then in here, you've got the little, uh, the little kind of fist um, gap that you can then slide that over like a glove onto his fists. Like... So, then we have a couple of hand swaps, both of which are for the left hand. The first is this open palm one here, um, so sort of in flight, you know, steadying himself while flying and stuff. Uh, decently sculpted, suffers a little bit from the usual McFarlane problem, uh, where the hands look a little bit disproportionate and um, bigger. Um, but you can see the sculpting detail in there, looks like a glove pulled over. Obviously reused from another figure, but that's fine. And then the other hand here is the uh, grippy hand. Um, we, we've seen this one several times again uh, with other figures. Uh, obviously just painted white to uh, go with the uh, glove pattern there. And this, of course, is the one you used to hold the lantern. It is a little bit tricky to get the lantern into the hands, actually. For, for whatever reason, it does kind of confound me. See how it sort of bends because it's so gummy, the handle. Um, but, you know, a bit of effort and you'll get there. Yeah, there you go. So you've got the grippy hand to hold the lantern. Then you have the foot stand. It's a standard McFarlane Toys foot stand, but as you can see, this one's got McFarlane Toys digital printed across it. Foot peg there, which goes into the peg holes on his feet. Uh, always great to see figures with foot stands. Uh, I'd recommend it to every manufacturer as standard, um, but this is, you know, fine. You might find that a little annoying if you're, like, you know, you're mixing up your uh, DC Direct McFarlane Toys DC Comics figures with your DC multiverse and stuff, but um, uh, that doesn't bother me, you know, but you might like some more uniformality in that space, um, uh, which is understandable for some. And then finally, the trading card. Again, these come as standard with DC Multiverse. They appear to be coming as standard uh, with DC Direct. Got that artwork there I mentioned before. I don't recognise where that's from particularly, uh, but very dynamic and interesting, although uh, a bit jarring that it's not classic Green Lantern-style artwork to go with the classic Green Lantern figure, but um, anyway... And then finally, you've got the McFarlane Toys digital uh, code to go and claim your, uh, your your digital NFT version of the figure. Uh, I'll move on to talk about that in just a second. I'll just wrap up the accessories as a whole before I do. So as far as accessories go, yeah, it's a tentative thumbs up. You've got enough options there to do a bit of storytelling. The foot stand and trading card are there as standard, although the trading card's that's just going in a binder, never to be looked at again, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's fine, it's solid, it's a decent selection. Uh, it feels like a little bit more than than I've had with some of the figures I picked up recently. Um, so that's fine, that's great. Um, I don't know if that's because it's McFarlane Toys Digital. Uh, is it enough for the, the creeping price? I mean, I've seen some of these, in the UK at least, going for uh, close to or on and around 30 quid. Uh, which is quite a lot when you consider the fact that I used to spend 23 quid on my McFarlane Toys DC comic characters. So is it enough in there to warrant the price increase? No. Is the NFT enough to warrant the price increase? Well, we'll get into that in just a moment. But it's enough. It lets you do some stuff. I've done some fun little poses with him and that that I've enjoyed. So again, judging it by its own standard, it's a thumbs up. But looking at it in the bigger picture, possibly a bit more in the middle. You know, so there you go. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's talk a bit about that NFT. So let me show you um, some what it, what that looks like and how that works. Okay, folks, I just wanted to say a couple of quick words on the McFarlane Toys Digital 
experience. So I scratched off my code on the back, uh, followed these brief instructions, uh, which do not cover the full extent of what you need to do to get the uh, digital figure thing that they give away. Um, you, you, you need to download their app, you need to visit a website, you need to set up a wallet with another organization, um, which I only have a very superficial cursory understanding of all this kind of wallet and NFT and crypto stuff. So I was navigating it with uh, out good solid guidance without good solid instruction. There is an assumption that you know and understand what all these things are asking you to do. Finally got all that set up. It takes an, a massive amount of memory space, uh, storage memory space on your computer. And um, uh, I, I redeemed my code and here we are now, as you can see on screen over there, uh, I've been updating assets at 99% for about two hours now. Uh, this is Saturday. And uh, I uploaded this last night, redeemed it and started the upload last night. It doesn't continue to upload if you close the app. So when my computer went into sleep mode, when I went to bed, it didn't carry on. I've then started it up again uh, today on Saturday. And I've been sat at updating assets for well over two hours now, basically, uh, at 99%. And I've been unable to take a look at my McFarlane Toys digital Green Lantern action figure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that running for a bit now, but the experience of this has, has not been fun. It's not been particularly engaging and definitely needs a lot more instruction. Operating on the assumption that action figure collectors, <laughs> middle-aged action figure collectors, understand why we need crypto wallets and understand um, the, the, this kind of figure selling marketplaces with a cryptocurrency value attached to the figure uh, that you get. And, um, you know, the fact that you can't even look at your, your action figure NFT <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's it's frustrating. It's, it's not been an enjoyable part of the experience at all. Uh, and I was sceptical to begin with, which is probably tainting my view. Um, but if it does eventually start working, I will happily demonstrate what the digital action figure looks like. But for this moment, that's a non-starter. And because it's taken so much memory on my computer, I may just be giving up and uninstalling it. So watch this space. Uh, let's see how things go. Uh, but, you know, I want to finish recording the review and editing it. Uh, what is this shit, Todd? Come on. All right, then, folks. Well, it's a couple of days later now. I had to step away uh, from letting the assets update and everything. Uh, you know, I've got life to live. I've got shit to do. I have got time to wait for McFarlane Digital Toy assets to <laughs> be updated or whatever. Uh, but it's a couple of days later now. Uh, I've got the camera off uh, for two reasons. First is I'm a right sweaty mess. It's by British standards. It's absolutely tropical over here right now. Uh, and the other reason is because this thing is GPU intensive and with my uh, screen capture software and then my camera recording software and everything all running at the same time, it, it, it was struggling to handle it. Uh, but as you can see, I've got these various kind of backgrounds and stuff that you can choose from. We've got a little uh, menu down the left-hand side of the screen uh, with different options, home, my creation, my collectibles, marketplace, blah, 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 blah. You can, you can see all those on the left-hand side of the screen. Your... Um, Collectible is in my collectible, so if I select that, you can see there's my uh, blue lantern. I'm not going to open that up because it's got the NFT code <laughs> in there. I don't want to reveal the individual NFT code because I think that's important in my limited understanding. Uh, but, you'll, but you'll notice I got a blue lantern rather than an actual green lantern, the one I bought. So, uh, and this is epic rarity. Uh, so, um, there you go. Uh, but then what you can do is you can go into like uh, um, you can go into your penthouse or whatever here. It'll, then it'll take about three hours for it to load. And then once it has loaded, you can see you've got this little My Collectibles menu up here. You can select your Blue Lantern. That'll load him in. Then you can do stuff to like change, uh, change his location. Uh, up, down, left, right. I think you can do stuff with the arrow keys. Yeah, like move left and right and stuff and move it about. I don't know. I'm not technically canny enough uh, with... Uh, in interfaces of this nature to know like if i want to rotate him i choose rotate we get this big uh, multicolored thing and i just want to uh i just want to uh, no no i don't want to rotate him like that i want to make sure he's facing forward uh and yeah i've got no i, I i'm not canny enough with this software and the uh, uh the tutorial and the help me guide is is, is is more confusing to me if i'm being perfectly honest uh scale objects i don't know is that is that like me to make him a bit ah there you go make him a bit bigger 
and so you can do stuff. Can I zoom in a bit? Yeah. Oh, too far, too far. Um, you can change the speed and the sensitivity, all this stuff as well. So there you go, there he is, and you can, you know, uh, you can go into player mode. But when I go into player mode, watch this, it'll go absolutely crazy. Ah, because you're sort of steering it with your mouse. There you go, here he is. Uh, and there you go, there's my digital NFT. Um, I haven't figured out as of yet whether I can do anything with his articulation to move his arm and legs. Um, <laughs> or do much more than sort of stand him in a place like this. But um, to be frank, th thoroughly uninspiring um, and underwhelming, you know. Uh, not not excited by this one bit. Uh, I don't, uh, it's escaped to leave the, uh, there you go. Um, I don't know how to circle round him. You know, if, if you're canny with this stuff and you and you've got experience of software and interfaces of this nature, then then, then you'll probably do fine. But um, if you're anything like me uh, and you're lost in the whole NFT stuff, and then you're lost in all this, it, it just it makes no sense. Fun, exciting. Thanks. I had a look at it, and uh, I probably could watch some tutorials and figure out if I can move it, do the articulation and stuff. Uh, but I'm not. I'm not. Not really all that interested in doing so, to be honest. You know what I mean? It's just it's unintuitive. I should be able to just log into this as an adult collector with no knowledge of this type of software and stuff at all and be able to do things with it, and I can't. Um, but, yeah, I don't get it. And I suppose that's the point, really, is that I shouldn't have to have had experience to uh, a, 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 an aspect of the figure that is contributing to the price, I believe, Um shouldn't have all these hoops to jump through, things to download, stuff to do, then getting involved in crypto and NFTs and things that, um, you know, he's like a mysterious wizard science science in its own right for the average layman like me, uh, and then to actually interact with the thing and do anything with it, you know? It, yeah, just underwhelming. A load of bollocks, really. Absolute bollocks. All right, folks, well, here's Hal going around on the turntable now so you can get a full 360 view of the figure. This is also the point in the video where I offer up my final thoughts and would I recommend this figure or not? And yeah, I think I would recommend the figure. I think I would. It's solid. It's just, it's good, solid DC, you know, classic uniform DC character. And that's all I ever wanted from Fallen Toys, really. Um, is it flawed? Yes, it is flawed. It, the criticisms are the same because I've been reviewing the same freaking book for like three years now on the channel. Two years now, whatever it is. So it's always the same flaws. The articulation feels limited. Uh, and the quality of the articulation doesn't match up to the quality of the sculpting. Which in this instance is alright, but I've had instances where I've been unhappy with the quality of the sculpting. Or the reuse has just got so out there and left field that it's just not a good representation of the character. But this one is solid, it's sound. Um, but what I will say is that... Uh, there's a couple of things missing, like uh, a foot stand. It, why has the Green Lantern not got a flight stand? When you say Green Lantern to me, I picture him flying, using his ring to fly. He flies in space, so uh, you know the, the the DC flight stand would have been more appropriate than the foot stand. The NFT stuff, it's just bobbins, just random, uh, you know, just crazy. And the price is increasing, uh, but the figure isn't changing. There's no evolution, no no growth. So, despite that recommendation, you would have to reconcile for yourself where you are with that. I have reconciled where I am with that, because this is my last McFarlane Toys DC-related pre-order. I've cancelled everything else, uh, and unless something really exceptional comes along and catches my eye, um, or it's a, a real solid classic-look character that I feel like I want for the mini-display, that's I'm taking a pause on it. That's, that's it now. That's the last one. So I've kind of reconciled where I am with that. Until I see some improvements in the, 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 the uh, modernization in the design uh, to match up to the price they're asking for now, I'm out, you know, uh, or taking a pause at least. A hiatus. Uh, so there you go. Okay, well, there's the review of the Classic Look Green Lantern from the DC Direct. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. If you did, of course, do all the youtube -y stuff. Hit thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Although, if you're here because you like DC Multiverse, and I've just gone and told you that I'm not doing any more McFarlane to toys for the foreseeable future, <laughs> maybe don't hit the subscribe button. I don't know. You'll make your own choice. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you like other action figures, maybe you'll like it. I don't know. Uh, but aside from that the only thing that is left for me to say is I hope you have a great day hope you have a great week uh, and if you do come around and hang out again sometime around here soon that would be fantastic so uh, take it easy folks ta-ra